The highly anticipated Samsung Unpacked event just took place a few hours ago. We wanted to dive deep into some of the most exciting announcements with friend of the show, Mark Spoonauer, Global Editor-in-Chief at Tom's Guide. Mark, thanks for taking the time as always. I know you are there on site. Talk to me at least so far about your top takeaways from this anticipated event at Samsung. Sure. I would say there's probably two big takeaways. One is the fact that Samsung is trying to flex its muscles when it comes to foldable phones. And they're, in a way, they're trying to reinvent them with new designs. And I think to a certain degree they've done that, especially with the Fold 7. And I think the other thing is that they're sort of reminding the world and Apple how much farther ahead they are when it comes to AI. The fact that it's actually on their watch now when you can't get like a, a, like the uh, advanced Siri on the Apple Watch, that sort of thing. So I think those are probably the two biggest takeaways so far. What should the average person know about Samsung's efforts into AI that they might be a bit unfamiliar with? Sure. Well, I think number one is the fact that they have that partnership with Google, right? And they have like Gemini on board. And so for the Fold 7, for example, when, that, when you open that phone and you like long press the side button, Gemini is right there and it's multimodal and what that means is that if you're like looking at the world around you you can have it answer questions based on what it's seeing and what it's hearing so it's way beyond what Apple has right now which is why you've heard rumors about the fact that they might be trying to do partnerships with or maybe even acquire the likes of perplexity and then they, there's also a, a, like a deal potentially in the works with anthropic so I think it's like the fact that it's multimodal it's live you could do pictures and video and share that even like what's on your screen I think just goes to show that there's sort of leaps and bounds ahead right now. Uh, were there specific new AI features that were rolled out this week, or are they further iterations of core products that the market has already seen? I would say that it's probably like more optimized for the foldable experience. So for example, if you're, if you're opening up the Fold 7 and you long press that button, it'll just like sort of launch up and it's, it's more like a pop-up window. So it doesn't like take over your entire screen. Um, and it's also like very helpful. There are some cool new features too. Like so, like if, just as an example, if you're into gaming, you can actually and you're like you're stuck on a level. <laughs> you can actually say, "Hey, Gemini, how do I get past this level?" And it actually knows based on what's going on on your screen. It'll go out there and look for tips and come back right to you. You don't even have to leave the game. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, any other big key hardware uh, specifications for the Galaxy Flip or the Fold phones? I know foldables was something you were keeping yep. your eye on this week. Yeah, so the Fold 7 by far and away like blew me away as a device just because for the very first time you're getting a foldable phone that's even lighter than the iPhone 16 Pro Max, for example, and you're getting a huge display on the inside. So they've managed to make it thinner than the iPhone, but you have a very big 8-inch display. So it's kind of like having like a phone and tablet in one, but for the first time you don't have that penalty when it comes to like the bulk of the device. Like I really liked the foldables before, but I wouldn't carry it as my everyday phone. This is the first first time that I would actually entertain doing that. Now the question is, would I do that for $2,000? That's the price of the phone. <laughs> uh, undoubtedly that Apple's iPhone is what takes up market share, but for a yep. long time Apple iPhone users who have considered an alternative, what do you think are some of the best arguments for considering a switch to a Samsung piece of hardware? Uh, well, in this particular case, I think it's like the versatility of the hardware, like the Flip 7 itself is also pretty cool, especially like for a younger generation. So they like the idea of having like a retro design, but it also lets you take pictures with the outside display. It's really great for selfies. And one thing that's like actually kind of cool is that if you actually wear the phone on your outside, you kind of have that AI partner like wherever you go. So I think like some of the Gemini AI features and this Galaxy AI features might get some people to sort of like sort of looking over the fence, like maybe I might want to upgrade to one of those devices. So I think it's really putting the pressure on Apple. And there's a rumor that Apple is working on a foldable phone of its own for 2026. But I think in a way, Samsung just showed them how to make it. <laughs> what does that tell you if Apple is considering what would be considered such a pretty significant departure from their core product? Is that to keep up with increasing demand that uh, Samsung right now can pretty uniquely meet? Actually, I think it's about like the, the ability to generate profit from a higher tier device, right? So foldables only make up less than 2% of the overall market share. But when it comes to like what's called ultra premium phones, which IDC defines, 
they say that Apple only has 50% of that market share because you have the likes of Samsung and Huawei and Honor and others, especially in China, that have these ultra premium foldable phones. So in a way, if Apple wants to up their profit margins, especially at a time that people are holding on to their phones longer, I think it actually makes sense for them to experiment with foldables if they really want to play in that space. What more do we learn in terms of AI devices or other wearables uh, that were teased sure. or announced at Samsung's event this year? Yeah, so I would say the Galaxy Watch 8 was the highlight when it comes to, to wearables. And I think what's cool about this particular watch, and it comes to like a classic version as well as regular, is that it's lighter, which is nice, but I think it has Gemini on board. The, facts that, the fact that you have access to that AI on the go, and that's whether or not you have your phone with you. It could use Wi-Fi or it could use LTE. So the fact that you'll always have this AI companion on your wrist is actually pretty cool. And they also have two new health features with the Watch 8 that Apple doesn't have. So one of them is the ability to rate, like you can actually measure the antioxidants that you have in your body by doing like a quick scan of your skin, which I thought was kind of creepy, but also cool. And it might come back and say like, hey, you might need to eat more like fruits and vegetables this week, which I kind of already know, but it is pretty cool that it can tell you that. And then there's another thing called vascular load, which is more about your heart health. So if you wear the watch for three nights in a row, it'll actually potentially help you with that particular aspect. So when it comes to health features, I feel like Samsung is, is definitely doing a good job with that. Mark, I think there are more than a few of us who could use a few more fruits and vegetables <laughs> in our diet. And I don't know if we need wearables to tell us, but it is a good <laughs> reminder, uh, no doubt about it. As you and I are having this conversation, we are in the middle of the first of its kind four day Amazon Prime Day, which is now much more like Amazon Prime Week. This is the perfect example and the perfect time, Mark, for a lot of consumers to go to an Amazon, a marketplace they're familiar with, and try and get discounts on these exact type of wearables. How do you view Samsung's positioning in the market of its pricing for its uh, hardware relative to other competitors? It's a good question because with the Fold 7 in particular, it's getting a price hike to you know 1999, and I think part of the reason why they're doing that is because there's not a lot of competition in the U.S., so they can kind of afford to do that. Because you have OnePlus, for example, actually said we're not coming out with the new foldable this year, so in a way they're they're sort of taking a risk. And with the the Galaxy Flip 7, that one is 11 or sorry 10.99, which is still kind of pricey. But what's interesting is that Apple, or I'm sorry, Samsung also released the Galaxy. Flip 7 FE, which is a more affordable flip style foldable that starts at eight ninety nine. dollars You know, Motorola actually has something that's even cheaper, but it's nice that they're trying to make foldables a little bit more approachable for the masses. What most excites you about what you've learned or things you hope to learn more about at this year's event? Uh, for me, it's just like, I want to live with the Galaxy Z Fold 7 for a week and maybe like ditch my iPhone just to see what it's like. Cause like I've talked about doing it before, but I've never done it just because we're all stuck in that ecosystem effect. Uh, but this is the first time I'd actually see myself carrying it around because again, you don't have that power, like that penalty when it comes to the bulk. So uh, I want to do this experiment and see what happens. Yeah, that ever-enclosing ecosystem of <laughs> Apple hardware for all of us that are on it. It has a way of dominating your life, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people watching this interview know exactly what that feels like. Mark Spoonauer, longtime friend of the show, global editor-in-chief at Tom's Guide. Thanks for the perspective. Best of luck out there, and appreciate your time. All right, thank you.